morning, folks. Ariel over here at Pineth. We're four days later. We are uncovering everything. Um, it looks like it's about to rain. I'm hearing thunder roll, and uh, we badly need the moisture on the beds. Zipper, please don't lay on the peas. Please don't. There's lots of places to lay that are not on the peas. You want to say hi to the camera too? No, you don't like being held. I know. Anyway, I'm going to try to get the covers off before it starts to rain so any rainwater can get fully into the bed. And I'm starting to feel some droplets. These frost covers, if you didn't go back and check out the video about how I put them together, are the heaviest weight I'm aware of. They're supposed to provide 10 degrees, up to 10 degrees of pr frost protection. And they provide about 40% um, light transmission. So yes, you can leave them on all day. And I often do when I'm gonna have back-to-back -back hard freezes. Um, though anytime I can get them off, I like to, and some moisture will come through them for sure, but the, not as much comes through as when they're not there. So if it really pours, some water comes through, but it's such a heavy cloth that it doesn't all come through. That's partly why I want them off. <laughs> Hoping this is gonna unload some rain on us. And if I don't get rained out here in just a second, then we're gonna actually look at what's growing in the garden. <laughs> Okay, it looks like the wind and raindrops are starting, so let's see if I can finish this recording. So we had three nights in a row of frost. Well, they were all freezes, but one was very, very hard. The frost covers are supposed to provide about 10 degrees of protection Fahrenheit. I know, I live in the U.S. is what we use. That would mean everything should be protected to 22 degrees, um, but the coldest morning when I woke up, which was later than just before dawn, which is actually the coldest time, of the morning. In the bedroom window, which was open, but in the window said 23. From what I see under here, I think it got into the teens out here in the garden. So this bed is all peas down the center and carrots down the side. They're all doing very well. They look fine. They're both cold hardy. They survived no problem at all. This whole bed is uh, purple cabbage at this end, green cabbage at that end. They're doing well. Cabbages and brassicas in general are also very cold hardy. Um, they seem to be thriving and they may have been okay even if they weren't covered. This is partly why I get my starts until we have our own greenhouse from a local greenhouse because they are raised very much more cold hardy than if I have to buy them from some other area, even the same plant, because theirs grow up with the actual conditions that we have here. This bed is a few more green cabbages and then some broccoli and some cauliflower. A couple people asked me about seeing pictures of the full broccoli heads before I cut them. I will try to get a video of that. They're not even close to making heads yet, but when we do get to that point. These are also in the brassica family, seem to be doing quite well and are getting some lovely rain on them right at this moment. Here in a few more weeks, these should expand so much that there, there will not be any soil uh, um, visible between them. And um, like I discussed before, when we planted the garden, what I try to plant is things that I generally know will grow pretty reliably here. I, uh, I risk some things every year, but mostly I try to plant stuff I'm pretty sure will grow and stuff that we will eat a lot of and stuff that stores pretty well. So we use a ton of cabbage. We, uh-uh, barely. This is one of my special sticks. That's not a chewing stick. Leave it, leave it. Um, 
and we use a ton of cabbage for fresh, um, making sauerkraut, making Danish Christmas cabbage, all that kind of stuff. So we have gobs and gobs of that and it's good to see it doing well. The strawberry bed here, again, I was sure the plants themselves would not have froze. They're very, very cold hardy, but as you can see, we've got lots and lots of blossoms and lots of little buds starting in here. And those can freeze and it won't kill the plant, but you will lose your, your harvest of berries for the year if that happens. So I covered them, they all look fine. I think they're they're going to be good and hopefully in a few more weeks we will um, actually have fresh strawberries to eat which will be exciting. The garlic bed, I'm actually very sure I would not have had to cover this stuff came up through the um, snow but I was covering everything else so I did. Hi beautiful, I love you. I do. I do. Um, as you can see this stuff is whatever that is two and a half feet tall it is growing well that will be the first thing i harvest you can go back and find lots of videos on planting garlic harvesting garlic curing garlic and so on but this was all planted last fall and is doing phenomenally um and yeah somebody had asked about leaving the frost covers on i do often if i just had unlimited time i'd probably uncover them every morning unless i thought it was going to be below freezing through the day um but sometimes due to just the time it takes to put them up and on if I know I'm getting back-to-back -back hard freezes I will just leave them on for the day and the plants are fine with that it uh you know enough light and such comes through that cloth because it is a cloth it's like a fabric it's not a plastic if I left like a clear plastic stretched over this during the day in the sun it would probably cook all the plants to death no matter what the temperature was if the sun was out so don't do that <laughs> but with that cloth um, some sun comes through not all of it some breeze comes through not all of it some moisture comes through not all of it so I can just leave them covered and it's all right but I'd like to get them back out in the air whenever I can and to get as much rainwater in as possible and we're not expecting another freeze for uh two more nights i believe <laughs> again and then the forecast i think it's actually saying something like 35 which is above freezing but i have learned over the years to expect any time the forecast says 30 anything i better uh count on that at my place it's going to freeze so sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but generally if the forecast is 39 or lower my policy is to plan on covering things uh just to be safe so two more days we'll be doing this whole thing again and back and forth all winter or all, all summer um, because that is uh, pretty normal to get frosts and freezes all through the summer. Now that one night was colder than normal for the middle of June. It doesn't often get into the teens in the middle of June and we did lose some stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. I don't know if you can tell from the direction my hair is blowing but our uh, our wind does go in circles here. We don't really have a prevailing direction. Just a minute ago it was blowing straight out of the west. Now it's blowing straight out of the east. And this happens normally here with storms. Um, this bed is sugar snap peas in the center. They're doing well. And the edges are radishes. They're actually doing pretty well, except you can see all the like cheese hole, uh, like Swiss cheese holes in their leaves. That is from flea beetles. Um, we don't love radishes and don't eat a ton of them, but they grow well here, but they make a pretty good sacrifice plant um, because in the spring when things are trying to get started, I do tend to get some little flea beetles and that's one of their favorite things. Drop it. This is my stick. Leave it. Um, so they're more attracted to the radishes and I don't mind losing some radishes um, and there's other things they don't want to lose. So that's why there's all these holes in the leaves. That would not be normal, but the little flea beetles, and I don't even think they're on here anymore, but they ate those holes when those little leaves were first starting out. And over here is my bed of lettuces. You can see I've got all different colors there. They're just starting to grow. A couple of those varieties are big enough. I could probably start to pull the, the first little plants and make one little bowl of salad to thin them just a bit. This bed is all beets differing kinds they uh they are growing well also so these two beds are all potatoes several different varieties uh, but that's what's growing in here and here we do have some damage some of the lowest lying leaves are fine and some of the ones that are up taller frost burn off that tells me without i don't actually have a thermometer that stays under the covers in the garden bed that records what the coldest temperature it got to was but based on years of experience using these covers I can get into the low 20s and not have this happen which is what makes me think it actually reached the the teens probably just before dawn which is usually the coldest time and it was a full moon night those always get colder when it's clear from my experience um, 
And so, yeah, there is some damage here. I believe they will grow out. I don't think it will kill them. I'm fairly sure of that. But we did probably lose some vigor and possibly some overall production that we would have otherwise had for the year, um, which is unfortunate. But short of having an actual heated greenhouse with hundreds of square feet of space inside, um, there's probably not a whole lot else I could have done to prevent this. Sometimes it happens. It is a little unusual for us to get a, you know, temperature into the teens by mid-June, but that's what happens. So we expect these will grow out, but they are a little bit damaged, which is a little unfortunate. And then this bed is where we actually lost some things. There's onions all up and down the sides. They're doing fine. They're pretty cold hardy. But down the center, I had green beans growing and they're a borderline thing that I plant every year. I don't often lose them right at this stage but it's not uncommon that toward fall right about the time i'm starting to pick the first green beans we get killing freezes that even through the covers kill them but i like green beans so every year i plant a few even though i know they're iffy at the moment i think every single one of them has completely frozen even under the covers except for one there that i see a halfway green leaf left on um, so i'm gonna have to decide here in a day or so if i want to replant them or simply put something else in this bed and give up on green beans um, for this year. But that was that was the worst damage. And I thought, you know, I know they're iffy here and I thought if, uh, if I did lose something, it would probably be them and I was correct. So that's how things are looking <laughs> around the garden as of right now. Overall, even despite the frost damage, the garden is overall looking much better than it did last year and uh, we're hoping for some more. I've got a few raindrops there and it quit, so I'm hoping for some more rain here. Otherwise, I probably will have to water these beds later. And no, we did not flood out with the rest of Yellowstone um, and some parts of Montana and such north of us. We did get some very heavy rain here. Um, creeks and rivers, you know, were swollen for a few days and high, but, but nothing like the washing houses away, flooding and such that happened to the north of us. And this area is, you know, not as in as much of a drought as it was toward the end of winter with our very low snow winter, but um, we can still use some more rainfall. Um, and actually I'm hoping it all comes to our area now and not on the, the neighbors to the north of us that are, are underwater still. They do not need any more right at this moment. So that's how the, uh, the stuff in the garden is looking and we'll do an update again in a little while and uh, see how things have changed. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.